أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد by the barak of Sidi Shaykh Sidi Muhammad Fazil Karkari Qaddas Allah Sirra Notes from the Muzakara of May 19th 2023. Before starting this video, I would like to state that this world would never have seen the light without Sidi Shaykh. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from Sidi Shaykh. So, a disciple asked whether it's preferable to memorize the Quran in the mind or to preserve it in the heart. Sidi Shaykh said that the true place of the Quran is the heart, although someone might memorize it in the mind. There is a risk of forgetting. If the Quran is preserved in the heart, it will never be forgotten. Umun Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was a walking Quran. Can a Quran and yamshi? To be a walking Quran, all of one's faculties should embody the Quran's teachings. This is possible if the Quran is preserved in the heart which is the body's most important organ, and from which the hands, feet, etc. can express the Qur'an's teachings. Conversely, if one memorizes the Qur'an mentally or in his mind, it remains stored as knowledge or as an affirmation, and that isn't necessarily applied. What is kept in the heart is used by the person and can be expressed by his faculties, jawarah, while what is memorized merely stays as information. Later in the Muzakara, Sidi Shaykh returned to this topic and said that the answer to the question is to better preserve the Qur'an in both the heart and the mind. In the heart is for those who know who the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, is and who work with the Qur'an until they become a verse of the Qur'an working on earth. However, memorizing the Qur'an in the mind can be done by anyone, even a non-Muslim who might want to study it. Allah mentions in verse 5 of Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا, like a donkey carrying a load of books. Sidi Shaykh concluded by saying that there is nothing wrong with those who memorize the Qur'an in their minds, but one just needs to apply what they have memorized. In the next question, a disciple saw two arcs side by side. Sidi Shaykh explained that in Suluk, spiritual wayfaring, there are always two arcs, the arc of servanthood, Qawz al-Ubudiyah, and the hidden arc, al qaws al-Ghaybi. This is a rule that is, was, and will always be applicable in Sufism. Suluk always has two arcs. Wayfarers work on the arc of servanthood until they reach the knowledge of the hidden arc. This arc will grant them hidden knowledge, like the science of names, of attributes, and of the essence, as that one works on the arc of servanthood until the hidden arc is revealed to him. When this art is unveiled, faith and piety increase in the heart, and the person feels peace and tranquility. For example, if one dreams of Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, he wakes up feeling happy, knowing that his spirit, ruh, has ascended to the presence of angels. On the other hand, if one dreams of Satan, a shaitan, or jinns, he wakes up feeling depressed and anxious, knowing he is descending. To rectify this, he should work on the arc of servanthood, which includes prayers, fasting, zakat, hajj, and all the acts pleasing to Allah until the hidden arc is revealed. The more one worships, the more the hidden arc will be revealed. This is why Shaykh al-Alawi says, Strive to witness. Jahid to shahid. Strive in the arc of servanthood to witness the hidden arc.
which is the arc of Malakut, till it become within two bows, length or nearer. Qaba qawsayn aw adna. It means that the hidden arc will be in the mulk for this person. In this state, one lives in revelation. Kashf. The body is engaged in acts of worship, ibadat, in the ark of servanthood, while the spirit, ar-ruh, resides in the hidden ark. Thus, the pearls attain the state of being within two bows, length or nearer, qabah al-sayni aw adna, every second of his existence. While the body is here among people, the spirit, ar-ruh, is in a state of witnessing. If it's witnessing good deeds, then that's favorable. On the other hand, if it's witnessing evils, jinns, and scary things within the hidden ark, one needs to work on himself. In the same context, Sidi Sheikh discussed the situation when he gives Mudhakara. He explained that disciples form an ark around him, with the Sheikh representing the dot. During the sittings of Dhikr or Mudhakara, the Sheikh decides a dot from the hidden ark for those in the ark of servanthood. Those who will receive from the dot are the ones who have worked on the ark of servanthood throughout the day, not only when the shaykh is present. The more the disciple perfects his role in the ark of servanthood during his day, the more he receives. The disciple prepares himself from sabah until the arrival of the shaykh through self observation or self control muraqabat al nafs this is the role of the disciple who does not have any other responsibilities as is the shaykh who gives to the disciple so the disciple should work on the ark of servanthood by controlling himself even if the shaykh is not present sidi shaykh added that for the disciple the shaykh is like a treasure the disciple must learn how to reach this treasure in the station of spiritual excellence, Maqam al ihsan The pathway to this treasure is by perfecting the art of servanthood within the stations of Islam, submission, and Iman, faith, from his bay'ah until his return to his Lord. This concept is applicable for those who perceive the shaykh as a treasure. However, for those who see the shaykh merely as a body and are only seeking to get a wisdom hikma from him, the shaykh serves for them as a guide or as an imam. Such individuals show respect and adapt only in the shaykh's presence and disregard him in his absence. Sidi Shaykh added that one might ask why all this is necessarily for the disciple. He explained that for the disciple, the essence of the shaykh, that of shaykh, is a treasure. The highest degree of knowledge that a disciple could attain in his spiritual journey is achieved through his inhalation in the essence of the shaykh. Sidi Shaykh then explained the three types of inhalation in the shaykh. The first type is inhalation in the name of the shaykh. The second type is inhalation in the attributes of the shaykh. And the third type is the inhalation in the essence of the shaykh, that is shaykh. So that was all for this video. We will try to go in detail in these three types of inhalation in the next video and continue the next part of the Muzakara. Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بالحق اللهم لك الحمد اللهم لك الحمد اللهم لك الحمد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم. وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين